Welcome to Bible Quiz. Today, we will embark on an insightful journey into the wonderful world of the Old Testament. With 25 carefully selected questions, we want to challenge your knowledge of the events, characters, and spiritual messages of the Old Testament. Are you ready to face the challenges and join us in a deeper exploration of God's Word recorded in the pages of ancient books? But wait a minute, before starting the quiz, make sure you hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. Get ready to embark on a deep and exciting spiritual journey where your knowledge and understanding of the Bible will be challenged and expanded. Together, we will create a meaningful Bible experience. Let's get started. Question one, what phrase does the Old Testament begin with? A, amen. B, and God said. C, let there be light. D, in the beginning. You get 10 seconds. That's D, in the beginning. The first verse of the Old Testament reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. It is the foundation of the belief in creation and God's sovereignty in Christianity. Question 2. From which of Adam's body parts did God create Eve? A. Rib B. Brain C. Lung D. Heart. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Rib. God created Eve from one of Adam's ribs. This is mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 22, highlights the creation of Eve from Adam's rib, symbolizing the unity and companionship between man and woman in marriage. Question 3. Oh, how the mighty have fallen! How did David beat Goliath? A. A rope. B. A wrestling move. C. By shouting, look over there. D. A stone from a sling. You get 10 seconds. That's D. A stone from a sling. David defeated Goliath by using a slingshot and a single stone to strike Goliath in the forehead, causing him to fall. This event is famously depicted in the Bible, particularly in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 49 to 50. David's victory over Goliath is often cited as an example of faith and courage in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. Question 4. Moses had a lot of power under God. Which sea did he split? A. Black Sea B. Dead Sea C. Red Sea D. Baltic Sea You get 10 seconds. That's C, Red Sea. In Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 to 22, Moses, under the power of God, split the Red Sea to facilitate the escape of the Israelites from pursuing Egyptian forces, demonstrated the extraordinary power of God, and served as a pivotal moment in the liberation of the Israelites. Question 5. Where did Samson's strength come from? A his heart, B, his hair, C, his toes, D, his Achilles tendon. You get 10 seconds.
That's B, his hair. According to Judges chapter 16, verse 17 in the Old Testament, Samson's powers were tied to his Nazi right oath, which included the directive to abstain from cutting his hair. Samson was made a Nazarite at birth, an oath stated in Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 to 21. The Nazirite vow involves consecrating oneself to God, marked by specific commitments such as abstaining from alcohol, avoiding contact with the dead, and not cutting one's hair. Your journey to never missing a quiz starts with the subscribe button. Click it now and stay connected with us. Question 6. Who wrote on a scroll all the disasters that would befall Babylon? A. Jeremiah B. Isaac C. Jesus D. Jacob You get 10 seconds. That's A. Jeremiah According to Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 60 to 64, the prophet Jeremiah wrote on a scroll all the disasters that would befall Babylon, in which Jeremiah instructs Sariah, a messenger, to read the scroll aloud in Babylon, and then tie a stone to it and throw it into the Euphrates River, symbolizing the eternity of judgment against Babylon. Question 7. Through what means did God speak to Moses? A. A pillar of fire. B. An olive tree. C. A talking animal. D. A burning bush. You get 10 seconds. That's D, a burning bush. In Exodus chapter 3, verses 2 to 4 of the Old Testament, there was a profound encounter between God and Moses. At this point in the story, Moses was in the wilderness when he encountered a remarkable sight, a bush that was burning but not consumed. This special event marks the beginning of Moses' divine calling and mission to lead the Israelites out of slavery. Question 8. What was the first plague that befell Egypt? A. Locusts B. Parasites C. Plague of Blood D. Earthquake You get 10 seconds. That's C, Plague of Blood. In Exodus chapter 7, verses 14 to 24 of the Old Testament, the story recounts the first of ten plagues that God sent upon Egypt to ensure the liberation of the Israelites from slavery. This original plague involved turning river water into blood, leaving fish dead and people unable to drink. Question 9. God has his reasons why did he flood the earth? A. To irrigate the plains. B. Eve ate the forbidden fruit. C. To protect God's justice. D. Because man had become wicked. You get 10 seconds. That's D, because man had become wicked. According to Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 to 8, the flood was seen as a divine punishment for the wickedness and corruption that had become prevalent among humanity. God chose to spare Noah and his family because of Noah's righteousness. Question 10. God caused this wall to fall so that Joshua and the Israelites could conquer it. What is the name of the defeated city? 
A. Jericho B. Berlin C. Antioch D. Bethsaida You get 10 seconds. That's A, Jericho. In Joshua, chapter 6, verses 1 to 21 of the Old Testament, the story recounts the miraculous conquest of the city of Jericho by the Israelites under the leadership of Joshua. This event was an important part of the Israelites' entry into the Promised Land, Canaan. This event is not only a testament to God's power and His faithfulness in fulfilling His promises to the Israelites, but also a symbol of the importance of trust on God's guidance. Question 11. The Israelites were enslaved. From which country did Moses help them escape? A. Israel B. Egypt C. Jordan D. Canaan You get 10 seconds. That's B, Egypt. According to Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 10, God informed Moses that he had seen and heard the suffering of the Israelites in Egypt and entrusted it to Moses as a tool to achieve this liberation. He told Moses to go to Pharaoh and request the release of the Israelites so they could return to their homeland. Question 12. What relation was Jacob to Abraham in the genealogy? A. Son B. Brother C. Grandson D. Father You get 10 seconds. That's C, grandson. According to Genesis chapter 28, verses 13 to 14, Jacob was Abraham's grandson. Abraham's son Isaac was the father of Jacob, who later became known as Israel. This passage marks the continuation of the covenant promise that God made to Abraham, extending it to the next generation through Isaac and then to Jacob. Question 13. The Old Testament has dozens of books. Which of the following is not one of them? A. Genesis B. Exodus C. Leviticus D. Revelation You get 10 seconds. That's D, Revelation. The book of Revelation is part of the New Testament, not the Old Testament. Question 14. This man's the ultimate patriarch. Who did God tell, I have made you a father of many nations? A, David. B, Abraham. C, Daniel. D, Moses. You get 10 seconds. That's B, Abraham. God said to Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations. This statement is found in Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. In this particular passage, God changes Abram's name to Abraham, signifying the divine promise to make him the progenitor of a great nation. The covenant between God and Abraham is a recurring theme in the Bible and is the foundation of both Judaism and Christianity. Question 15. Which famous city did Nebuchadnezzar rule? 
A. Babylon B. Rome C. Athens D. Jerusalem You get 10 seconds. That's A, Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar's pride and praise for Babylon is actually reflected in the book of Daniel chapter 4, verse 30. In this verse, King Nebuchadnezzar expressed his pride and admiration for the city of Babylon, which he believed he had built through his own greatness. Question 16. Which woman was turned into a pillar of salt? A, Joe's wife. B. Solomon's wife C. Lot's wife D. Samson's wife You get 10 seconds. That's C. Lot's wife in Genesis chapter 19, verse 26, Lot's wife disobeyed the angel's instruction not to look back at the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and as a result, she was turned into a pillar of salt. Question 17. Which son did God ask Abraham to sacrifice? A. Fred B. Isaac C. Jacob D. Joshua you get 10 seconds. That's B, Isaac. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. This story is found in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. As Abraham prepared to carry out God's command, at the last moment, an angel of God intervened and provided a ram caught in the bush to replace Isaac. This intervention was a demonstration of God's mercy and a test of Abraham's steadfast faith. Question 18. After many years, they were the only two Israelites allowed to enter the Promised Land. A. Adam and Eve B. Cain and Abel C. Jack and Diane, D, Joshua and Caleb. You get 10 seconds. That's D, Joshua and Caleb. According to Numbers chapter 14, verse 30, God declared, Joshua and Caleb were the only two people of the generation that left Egypt whom God decided to continue into the Promised Land. This declaration was partly a consequence of the Israelites' rebellion against command, their lack of faith, and their disobedience to God. Question 19. Who was God talking to when he said, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. A. Joshua B. Noah C. Jacob D. Abraham You get 10 seconds. That's A, Joshua. In Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, God is speaking directly to Joshua, urging him to be strong, courageous, and confident in his new role as leader of the Israelites. The promise that God would be with Joshua wherever he went was a source of encouragement, emphasizing God's presence and support in every aspect of Joshua's leadership journey. Question 20. Who ate honey out of a lion's carcass? A. Goliath 
B. Moses C. Samson D. John the Baptist You get 10 seconds. That's C. Samson. The man who ate honey from the lion's carcass was Samson. This event, described in Judges chapter 14 verses 8 to 9, is part of the larger story of Samson's life, demonstrating his extraordinary strength and the unique circumstances surrounding his actions. Question 21. On which mountain did God give the commandments to Moses? A. Mount Tabor. B. Mount Sinai. C. Mount Ararat. D. Mount Olympus. You get 10 seconds. That's B. Mount Sinai. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 20, God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses on top of Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments are a set of moral principles that serve as a foundation in the religious and ethical teachings of Judaism and Christianity. Question 22. Who wrote the psalm, The Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusts in Him, and I am helped? A. Isaiah B. Moses C. Solomon D. David You get 10 seconds. That's D. David. Psalm with the verse, The Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusts in you and I am helped, is Psalm chapter 28, verse 7. It was written by King David reflecting the theme of faith and reliance on God for strength and protection. Question 23. Which king's dream did Daniel interpret? A. King Josiah B. King Richard III C. King Nebuchadnezzar D. King Zedekiah. You get 10 seconds. That's C, King Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter 2, verses 26 to 28, Daniel explains in detail King Nebuchadnezzar's dream revealing the different parts of the great statue that represent the kingdoms and successive events in history. This display of divine wisdom and insight played a key role in establishing Daniel's importance in the Babylonian court, demonstrating his guidance and revelation God through him. Question 24. After committing murder, who told God, My punishment is greater than I can bear? A. Cain B. Adam C. David D. Judas Iscariot You get 10 seconds. That's A. Cain. This event is recorded in Genesis chapter 4, verse 13. Cain made this statement after killing his brother Abel out of jealousy. Cain expressed his sorrow at the severity of his punishment and had to face God's punishment for his actions. Question 25. Who said, Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David my father be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude? A. Saul B. Solomon C. Isaac D. Pablo Picasso 
you get 10 seconds. That's B, Solomon. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 7 to 9, King Solomon prayed to God that his promise to King David, Solomon's father, would be fulfilled. He asked for wisdom and understanding from God to better guide his people. In response to Solomon's humble request, God not only gave him wisdom and understanding, but also blessed him with wealth and honor. This event is significant in biblical history because it marked the beginning of Solomon's reign, characterized by his famous wisdom and the building of the temple in Jerusalem. Oh wow, what an amazing exploration of the Old Testament scriptures. How did you do? Whether you found success in mastering the quiz or uncovered new insights, always remember that the Old Testament is a treasure trove of divine wisdom offering endless opportunities for discovery. If you found value in this quiz, we invite you to give the video a thumbs up and share it with your loved ones. Let's spread the joy of biblical exploration together. Your feedback is invaluable to us, so please share your thoughts, questions, or ideas for future quizzes in the comments section below. Together, we can continue to enrich our understanding of God's timeless word. Thank you for journeying with us today, and may the blessings of God accompany you on your spiritual quest. See you in the next video.